this is Pat with Petresca Papers. I am out in the Bluebird Bungalow today and I've got a little bit of a cute overload for you. But first of all, welcome. And if you are new to my channel, I welcome you wholeheartedly. If you are one of my loyal, true, long subscribers, thank you so much and welcome back. And if you like what you see today, I really hope you'll subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Every time you interact with me, it helps my little channel grow. So I really hope you'll do that. But today, let's move forward. All right. So you remember back in the early fall, we did the green wardrobe that had little autumn or fall dresses. Okay, well, I believe I promised Christmas dresses and here we are. Now, this is, where's the other loop? There it is. This is a digital kit on my Etsy shop. Now, I do believe the green was a freebie, the, the, the wardrobe. And then the dresses were a kit. This is going to be a kit, a digital kit offered on my Etsy shop. The wardrobe is not a freebie. It will be included with the dresses. So we've got a partridge in a pear tree wardrobe. Okay. Same, same. Let's open this up. And inside we have dresses and this kit makes 12 little origami dresses so let me show you the dresses okay and after I introduce all this to you stay tuned because then I'm going to introduce all the kit to you and you need to stay tuned till the end to find out how to make that a little hanger for your dresses. So stay tuned and you need to watch the whole video. Okay. All right. Boy, I sound like your mom, don't I? All right. So we've got, let me move these out of the way. We have our red quilted dresses and green quilted dresses okay that's one sheet and it looks like this like that okay so that's those dresses right there and then we've got mistletoe and candy cane. There's that candy. Wait, it disappears when you put it down on there. There's the candy cane dress, one of them. The candy cane dress with a check bodice. Here's the mistletoe with a striped bodice and a mistletoe. And see, I boo-booed that. I left my white on. Cut your white off. And there's the plain one. Okay, there's those. And then I have the plaid. So there is four different plaids. So we've got the total, oh yeah, what, there's a word for this, tartan. The red tartan and the black watch tartan. And you need to cut off these white edges. And I have another little secret on how to get that cute little white collar. So you need to stay tuned. See that? And then there's these two that will have kind of a lace bodice. Okay. So 12 origami dresses and a partridge in a pear tree wardrobe. So let's 
get on with this and let me show you how to make these dresses. I will have some links below for what we did back in the fall and for a tutorial on how to use the template that I have posted on my Petresca Papers Facebook group. I'll link that below. You can go do this and it will be a guide to show you how to easily fold these dresses. Okay? So, on with the show. Let's get on with how to make these. I'll be back with you shortly. Bye. Okay, let me introduce you to the kit of the 12 Christmas dresses and the Partridge in a Pear Tree wardrobe. So here is the wardrobe page, and this is, I'm going to say similar, but it's really pretty much the same wardrobe as we had for our fall autumn dresses. This was the green wardrobe. And this is the partridge in a pear tree wardrobe. So we've got that cover. And then we have a lining page. So you print that two-sided, run it through this way. And if, you're, if your printer comes out this way, and, and printers are all so different, but you want it to print, it does, this lining does have a direction. So for instance, I have a eco tank and it comes out here, so the head of my paper is here. So when I'm going to print and I want the head of the, the print on this side, I'm going to just put it in that same way. I'm not going to flip it around. It's just going to go back up and down. In. All right, so the cover or the wardrobe and the lining. And each of the pages has four dresses on them. So we've got candy cane and mistletoe. We've got four different plaids. And we have some of the quilted, quilted quilt block dresses. Okay. Now I have done, let me set that over here. I have done the quilted. Okay. And the mistletoe and candy cane. But I'm going to work on the plaid ones today and make the wardrobe. Where's that wardrobe go? There it is. So I think I'm going to do the wardrobe first. Is it so simple? Now this is also on the fall dresses. I will link that below. But basically I am going to cut out all this gray area and my white edges. Right along here. Did I get in there? No, you didn't even cut that. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Okay. Now you could keep that. You could keep that to make tags. And that's a little hint for something that's coming for more December fun. I'm going to be working on after I finish this. All right, turn that off. Let's get this white off here. And I am going to use my scoreboard. I need to get on there, right? Along there. There we go. 
I don't know. Not very straight. Straight enough. I'll probably do a little distressing because you know distressing hides some imperfections. And we are so not perfect. Okay. Need my scoreboard. Sorry for that racket. All right, and let's pull out my favorite tool, which is a embossing. I don't even know what you call those. Embossing. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, I think I could just go straight along there. I didn't need to move it because it's an actual quarter inch. And then there's a quarter inch there. And, and there. And there. And then on the outside of the door. And I think I need to just move it just a titch for the outside of that door because this portion makes a pocket. Turn it around. I like having this line on my scoreboard. It makes it easy to see if I've got it lined up, top and bottom. And that, that, and that. Okay. So that's all we need of you, scoreboard. Do a little distressing really quick. I'm using vintage photo that just I don't know seems to be my go-to let's go around this top edge also kind of hides that white okay oh, look at that nope we're not gonna cut it up because that will cut off part of our wardrobe. So we're just going to disguise it. I wish I could get my printer to print borderless. Well, at least now it kind of looks like wood. All right. So we're going to fold. Old. And I wish I could make this. Oh, I didn't do that with the score. I want it to be straight. I wish I could make this a bigger wardrobe to hold more dresses. But this is the size that works for my sheet of paper. All right. And I've got a little hole punch right here. So I'm going to come in and put a little hole right on that edge. And a little hole. I hope I'm even. Okay. Let's put... String in. Oh no, this seems like floppier string than I used before. And it seems like what I did before. a knot is just going to come right out. So I'm just going to grab a piece of tape right along there. Let's get this in there. We need to do this before we glue down the flaps. Okay. 
Okay, come on. Come on, come on. Seems like the other black that I used would have had a bit more body to it. Okay, and then we'll tape that down. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we didn't do very good with that. I think I'll put another piece of tape on it. Okay. So, I haven't folded this one yet. Fold and fold. Okay, so there's the doors. Just like that. And I'm looking at these door knobs. I'm thinking I may want to size them down again a little bit before I list this. Okay, so we fold that and that and that. I am going to give you a little bit of an angle so that it doesn't. right up like that. We hurry and put a little bit of glue on here and then we'll glue the flaps down and our wardrobe is finished. Waiting for dresses and unfortunately all 12 will not fit in it. I know. I know. Nice and flat here on the bottom. Good, good. Okay. Now I'm going to reach in with my phone folder and make sure I've made contact with those flaps. Need a little bit here and a little bit there. Here and there. Not on my work surface. Okay, fold that, like that, and that. Let's tie you. Whoop, are you? I'm just thinking my glue is just magic and sticking immediately. It doesn't have a little bit of time it needs. Okay, let's do this. Cute. Okay, there's the wardrobe. These are too long. Trim you off a bit. Okay, let's do the dresses. So, back in the fall, I did a tutorial with a template that you could download for free off of my Petriska Papers Facebook group and practice folding the little dresses. This is larger than this. Wow. Obvious. But this will help you learn how to fold your dresses. And I'm going to go over this. I will link that video below. So, so far two videos I'm linking. Now I am going to cut with my trimmer. I want to take off the white edges. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, get it where it needs to be. Okay. And 
I have found out that if I start my blade, especially on this copy weight paper in the middle, it does not fight me quite so much. Because when I start from the edge, this thin paper kind of fights it. Right. And then one more over here. Look like my printer printed too straight. So I may, I think I can keep that on. Now I'm going to cut them into fourths right down the middle. Some of the sheets have a white line, some don't, or a white space. Okay. Closer. Okay, and cut there. Not sure which one I'm going to do yet. I think, I think I'm going to do this red plaid. All right, are you ready? Here we go. You fold it in half. Okay, matching up your corners. And I didn't match that very well, did I? All right, fold it in half. Now, I just kind of skip a little and I just fold it in half this way. And I open it up. And this one is doing the right thing, this one. I need to have this one come around and meet right there in the middle. Okay, so, all right, so this is what we've got so far. Middle and then the two sides fold in to meet that middle. Now, I open it up and I am taking this crease to match that middle fold. So I kind of open it up and then I'll fold that middle and crease it and then come around to this. Do the same thing. Fold that up to meet that middle fold. And you really want, especially with the plaids, you want those plaids to all line up. All right, so now this is what we have. We have this. So here's our middle fold. This was our two side folds meeting that middle, and it gives us that. Okay, now. The more I make these little dresses, I like a smaller bodice. And when you do this, you've got a line right there. I am gonna just fold right along this plaid line. I'm just, I'm just gonna fold there. And I think I'm gonna grab my ruler to help me. And I, since I can see where I wanna fold this way, I'll fold it this way first. Okay, but then I really do want it to go this way. You're folding a few layers so it could fight you just a little. Come on, All right. we'll come to you from the right side because you can see I'm getting a little bit of a bulky fold back there. Okay, is that good? That looks good. And then you're going to fold, and it's about a quarter of an inch up onto itself. Okay, so that's what you've got. It's good to have your bone folder because you want these to be tight creases. All right, now we are going to take 
this flap and working down here we want a little tiny pleat and you hold your finger there and then just kind of straighten this out going up so you're really kind of flaring that side out. You want it to lay flat like that. So we've got a little fold there and then that kind of took this from being straight across to an angle. So then we're going to do this one the same way. Come down and match up that same size pleat there and then work your fingers up and work them across. So now we have the pleat open at the front of the skirt. Now, several of my videos I would flip it and go to the back to make the v-neck. I have found staying on the front is easier. So we're going to take this and you can see this fold right here is where we're aiming to get this flap Fold it down in a nice straight angle. And it's nice when you've got the plaid, you just make sure that that's lining up with one of your lines. Okay? Same process for the other one, the other side. It's much easier if I've got it down here. So I'm going to, there's that fold. That's as far as I want that to go. And I want these two to come to a nice V and meet. That will give you a very nice V neck. All right. Now I'm going to take my fingernail. You could use your bone folder, your ruler. Ruler might be the easiest your ruler there and then just oh, it's easier with my finger now just kind of make a fold just a guide fold underneath the collars or that v-neck okay now we're going to open this up and then you push down on the middle of that fold this fold to make your v so again, I'm pulling this open. I'm going to push against that to make that V fold. Okay. Turn it over. Now this little flap, just as easy as pie, folds down. And we have our V neck. All right, then we're going to bring this side and fold it right along that edge and this edge that we've already folded along there and there. Nice and straight. Now, this is where it's a little tricky. You want to take this and pull it you want this fold to be right against the bodice. And you're going to fold it up and then just kind of work your way down that skirt, making a nice crease. I'm going to do it again over here. This folds up all the way, which leaves this kind of hanging out there. Now, what I'm talking about, if you don't, if you don't pull it over very tight, you're going to end up with a little gap there. So you want to kind of pull on this little fold here so you get a nice fold right up against there. And you can see these two are meeting up right across there. That one and that one. And then again, you're just going to work your way down that edge of the skirt, making your crease for that. Now it's time for sleeves. 
you take this and this is the edge right here where this fold is and you want to fold your sleeve your little cap sleeve back there there's one sleeve and right on that edge and your second little sleeve and I've got a little bit of white there and it's kind of bugging me shouldn't but it does so I am going to trim that little bit of white off right along there okay ah it's on that one too well let's do it All right, so it's done. However, I want to show you something that I discovered. So I like to back mine with something. All these were backed with a kind of a natural looking deli paper. But as I was doing this, I discovered something that makes the little, the white, thin copy paper desirable. So, I'm going to put some glue in a couple of strategic spots and glue it to this white copy paper. So, I want this to be glued down, that to be glued down. I'm going to put some inside this fold. Now, do you have to do this? No, you do not have to do this. I, I think this year, I don't know if I'm going to even put up a big tree. Last year, if you were subscribing, you saw my twig Christmas tree that had little houses I'm thinking it may be a little dresses year. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So here's our dress. I'm going to put some glue around there, around here, maybe up in there even, and along this bottom edge. I want it to stick pretty much all the way around. And up in there, along the V-neck. All right, I think that's enough. Put it down. Make sure it's all nicely glued. Now we're going to trim it out. And this is where I discovered something fun. And I've got, where are my got a pair of scissors that are better trimmers than others. Did I bring them out? I don't think they made the trip. Okay, it's going to be you. So I'm going to I am going to cut that I think I'm cutting that white off. I don't know why, but I am. Right along there. I'm going to cut up the edge of this dress. I want to get really close. I don't really want to cut that fold. You could, I'm looking, we could have left a little white cuff on there, but I didn't. Now here's where my discovery came in. I'm going to cut straight across there. I'm not cutting down in there yet come along here and while we're here let's just see could we leave a cute little white cuff there yes I should have done that on the other side oh well you will though okay now up in here to make a little collar you are just going to cut down in there like that and then that folds like that 
That folds like that. Oh my gosh. Oh, now I'm really mad I didn't leave a little white cuff over there. So we're just going to cut you off. Didn't do it. So glad you guys can learn from my errors. And I cut in there. I shouldn't have. Oh well. Oh well, oh well. And we're just going to put a little dab of glue right there and right there. And we've got, I love the collar. I love that little collar. You could, this has got some faux lace, or not faux lace, but just lace on the print. But you could add lace on here. But I've got one more thing. One more thing. And I think some of you could just go bonkers. I figured out a little hanger out of a clothespin, I mean out of a paper clip. So let me show you what I did. This one actually looks like it could, I don't know. I don't like seeing the hanger under there, but you know what, this is just for fun. So let me show you what I did. And I am by no means an expert with this because you can see this is as many as I've made. I, I was on Pinterest and I said paper clip hanger. So here's what I have done. So you've got a, the fat end and a skinny end. Take the skinny end and pull it up softly and then pull this out a little bit that way. Then this can come up. That's going to come over and meet that. And now you can kind of see we've got the hanger effect. And then I've got my needle nose pliers. So I'm going to take where they meet and kind of fold that up or straighten that out. And it seems this, I don't know if I bring that up a little bit. It almost feels like it needs to be a little shorter, at least with this particular paper clip. So I'm going to clip it and then it's meeting right there. And then I'm going to take my, I don't know what they are. I can see this is too long. So, right like that. And it looks like it needs to be straighter. Let's use you that up like that and let's see let's use you pull it down okay it's not a beautiful hanger but it's a hanger so if you're gonna hang them on a tree you would put the hanger <laughs> oh it's cute put the hanger put the dress on a hanger Maybe even temporarily put it on the hanger. Okay, so let's put a few dresses in this wardrobe before I sign off. So we're going to put this one in. Let's put in the quilted. Let's put in the green quilted. Let's put in this cute mistletoe. And the candy cane. So how many did I get in there? One, two, three, four, five. I think I can get a sixth one. Let's put you in there. And then we're going to close it up. And call it done. All right, my crafty creative friends. I hope hope you enjoyed this. I just, I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. And you know, 
there's an empty back, which is just screaming for a pocket. So you could add another pocket and put in more of your dresses. Probably get all 12, six in there and six on the back. And you could use this for the 12 days of Christmas and put a little bit of journaling on the back. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. This is a digital kit, and I didn't say that at the beginning. This is a digital kit. It will be available in my Etsy shop. You'll get everything to make the wardrobe and 12 little origami dresses with a tip on how to make hangers. Thank you so much, you guys. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. So, little paper clips. Now, these are the first ones I've done, but I did find that G Car, or Kerr, I think it's Car, did a video, and I am gonna try her method, which looked great. I need flat nose, oh, where are you? Flat nose and round nose pliers. And her paper clips were about an inch. And it looks like these are just a little bit bigger than an inch. What she did is she pulled up one side like that. Pull up this side like that. And maybe a little further than that. Open that up and then trim off. I've got a little pair of trimmers here. I'm going to trim off so it's got a nice little hook for the hanger. Now, what she did was, you can see this is a little bit bigger than this because that's the bigger side. So she just kind of straightened it out and curled it around so that it was a little bit more hanger shape. Like that. Let's try that on this side too. That looks about even. And then what she did is her round nose and made this a little make a little loop and then you catch it onto there Let's see here let me try this again you're not laying as flat as I want you to Catch. Let's do this. Let's take, turn you up like that, and then this little loop catches in there, and looks like my little hanger hook needs to come up just a little bit and then you are going to smush that down it's not even so let's try again okay pull this up this up and I'm linking her video below because she is really good at this but this is giving you the idea let's trim off some of that and then let's work on making this 
a little less round. Okay, that one's still very big. Let's take this and make a little loop like that. Pull, push that down, push that down, and let's make this. And right there, and I think I am giving us leaving too much of a little loop. Let's see if we can just straighten that out a little bit. Let's push that down. Straighten you up a little bit more that way. There, that's in the middle now. Let's squish that down and I'm going to trim off just a little bit of that okay little hangers this one my first method where I did not curl that around gives you a bigger hanger so I may leave both on the video and you can uh, check out which one you like the best. Okay.